Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. Hope you're experiencing a beautiful fall day, as we are here in Chicago. But it's Friday, so it's time to get to the PowerPoint. And this one is called Rendezvous with Destiny. Well, you see this little Shiva image? It has the seven chakras on it. And the idea of the Kundalini is an image. And they use language, intentional language, a grammar that's cryptic. It's a pictorial script that gives you one of their images of the movement of spiritual potential from the base of your spine, where it's basically involved in self-preservation and it's all about me, to the crown chakra, where at the end of your anatomy and the beginning of the rest of space interfaces so that there's a part of your energy which isn't your own, it's really cosmic. The idea of raising the Kundalini is bringing your mindset out of those preoccupations that are so self-centered and ego-oriented into something that's more universal, transpersonal, and service-oriented. So, to that end, let's go. Have you heard the call? These stories are serious business, as well as giving you lighthearted diversion, but we call it Shruti Smirti, what was heard and what was remembered. You listen to the teaching, and what do you take away from it? More important, what do you apply after pondering the benefits of doing it? Ramana Maharshi, one must be ready to sacrifice everything for the truth. Ooh, even Jesus said, if you love mother and father more than me, you don't have part of me. I don't think he was saying to reject your parents or the people you love, but to understand your priorities about giving spirit second place is giving spirit no place. So the effort must be ceaseless. Most of us don't want to be that vigilant, that diligent, that persevering. Uh, but ceaseless and untiring until the goal can be reached. So otherwise, what people do is they hear a little bit of the teaching. They reduce what is really unfamiliar and beyond into something that's well known. And so they think they can control it. And he calls that sterilizing dogma. But you have to have viveka and see through that so you can move to the next deeper stage of letting go. The three faces of God, generating, organizing, destructive principles, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. The whole idea is, in Indian philosophy, the ultimate Brahman, that which is beyond concepts, defies every attempt at systematization. So have an image of it, that's not it. Describe it beautifully, that's not it. Embody it, I guess people can tell if that's it or not. Now your words are so important, the mantric value of words with so much misinformation, disinformation, false information, advertising, manipulation. The true mantric value of words is inexhaustible in its constructive and suggestive power, but can also be destructive. Look at these ways we use words you know, in this kind of semi, I wish it was funny, but not. Um, words that bribe, words that reward, words that placate, words that distract, words that pacify, words that shut you up. No wonder why people can't have a teaching at a deep level. Uh, their mind has been co-opted by the words and the powerful stories that these words suggest. But the idea is not to study this objectively, to be outside of it. You are both the data and the scientist studying. Not as an anthropologist, how quaint these cultural things are. Not as a historian to see where it is in the march of time. Not as a literary scholar to compare the scriptures and the writings of one culture to another. But as a self-psychologist, looking into my own mind, my own brain, my own body, my own thought forms. And my x-rays are my perceptive insights into the symbolic images. So I don't only look at things historically and literally, but much more psychologically, metaphorically, poetically, archetypally, imagistically. Now, the idea of the guru, the guru is within, G, you are you, but the guru is filled with compassion. So if you absorb yourself in him or her, or the idea of what the guru is, the compassion will fill you. Very few people follow a guru and end up like serial killers. You serve humanity. Immerse yourself in the love of the guru, or the power of the guru, which is that which dispels darkness and brings light into your life. When you feel like it's your own, it is your own consciousness. You don't project it on someone else. 
they arc it back to you to recognize your own inner divinity. And so we say, sit down for an extended chat. Stay for a while. What's your hurry? There's a variety of understandings that each one of us brings to the path. Each one of us has our own kind of ignorance. Each one of us has our own set of problems. And this is what inevitably sets us on the quest to find out, to experience, to realize. So when you're in front of the guru and the guru gives you that constituent glance of being, gives you a sense of reality, the guru saw me. That's called darshan in yoga. Uh, it may not be in the fantasy version of the Indian tradition, but who saw you, who admired you, who recognized you, who blessed you, that was form of the guru acknowledging the depth of your own being. All right, John Wooten, one of my favorite basketball coaches, always gave life advice, not just sports advice. Success is peace of mind, which is the direct result of self-satisfaction in knowing you made the effort to become the best you're capable. Uh, life is unpredictable. So you get consistent. Even if you can't trust it, it's unreliable, you get consistent. That's called prashtikyam, being established in the practice. It confers so many benefits for you once you learn how to do that. Uh, as I always say, nothing satisfies your inner hunger as much as giving the one with all the juice behind it. And only you know what that is. So I hope you find it and put it out there. Alan Watts, one of my favorite philosophers, he always says the whole creation is regarded as the Vishnu Lila, the play or the dance of life. Nataraj, Shiva is the cosmic dancer, not just the cosmic yogi. And in Indian philosophy, they call the world illusion. From the Latin root of the word illusion is ludere, to play. So <clears throat> I'm always inviting people out to dance, to play. Unless you have something we have to deal with, then we face that aspect. But if not, huh? it's your job. He says, if we fail to accept delight in life, and you can turn your attention to all the stuff that's horrific in life, but if you fail to accept delight in life, then the boon of converse with the gods is denied. The gods withdraw from an inhospitable and irreverent world. So how do you find your joy? And remember, this is an old model. Even Jesus said, we piped for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge for you and you did not mourn. People are not moving with the rhythm, rhythms of life, whether they're positive or negative. So all I can say to you is what I've learned. It may not be your path. I hope you find your own. But my teacher taught me to change my youthful idealism into mature participation. That's how I got initiated. I'm still doing it 50 years later. And unless something intervenes with my health to make it so bad, I'll probably do it till the day I die. And I hope that you will too. Go to GabrielHalpern.com, sign up, tell other people to sign up, contact me personally. I love to have all these extra conversations with people on Zoom or FaceTime or texting, whatever. Uh, it gives me life and I hope it gives life to you too. Also, don't forget to check my next Flourish weekend on the 28th in Hinsdale. Great group from California coming with wonderful healers, musicians, and I'll be doing storytelling there. So check that out and hope to see you uh, on the 28th in Hinsdale. Peace to you. Have a great day.